What's up guys, Atlas Plays here, and I'm here today with a Temtem competitive video. Um, I wanted to actually do a lot more of these in the future, um, especially since I'm getting more into competitive Temtem. But basically, if you're a fan of my Pokemon Showdown content, or just Pokemon Showdown content, or competitive monster taming in general, then you'll probably enjoy this. Um, I'm going to be, I already recorded this video, so what I'm going to be doing here is giving live commentary on, like, you know, my thought process, the step-by-step, -step, and everything that goes with it. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to go ahead and start the video. So in the beginning of the uh, Tim Tim competitive battles, you pick your team if you've already had a pre-made team, and then you go into the pick and ban phase here. So you both start off with, I believe, eight Tim Tim each, and you ban two of them. Wait, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight Tim Tim each, and you ban two of them uh, each. And then you would choose your remaining five, and then you would go into battle with those five Tim Tim. Um, so right here, looking at this guy's team, um, the most threatening thing to my team was his water type comma, and unfortunately, part of my recording got like a uh, cropped, so you can't see it. But you can see the X on the bottom right. I got rid of that comma, and he got rid of my Nagai's because my Nagai's is a water and mental type, which is like psychic. And that's super effective against um, his Mushuk, which is the mushroom boxing thing that you can see he chose right here, if my cursor shows up, which it should. And then I went ahead and went with my Chromium right here, which is like a chameleon. And then Mimit, which if you've played Pokemon, you would know Ditto. Mimit is basically Ditto. And because most, if not all, of his team is weak to the fire and digital types on my team i wanted to prioritize getting them on my team as uh, quickly as possible and since he had a electric type right here and also a mental type right here both of them weak to my crystal type valash i went ahead and chose that for my team and then going back just a little bit um i'm gonna wait till i choose my uh, amphitere amphitere is also the electric type and uh, nature type which is like grass so Going across the board, we have Chromion. Chromion is a digital fire type. It has the ability Sin Sinner type, which boosts um, boost the power of moves that it shares a type with its ally. So basically, since Mimit will be turning into it right here, the other Chromion, it will get a boost and also a synergy type. So. Every battle in Tim Tim is a double battle. So if you've played VGC or if you like Pokemon VGC or if you played like games like Pokemon Coliseum or something, then you'll be somewhat familiar here. There is a learning curve, especially when managing the different um, managing the different uh, moves and the stamina costs for those moves. Because in this game you do have stamina, so you can't just spam moves. You have to be mindful of how much stamina that move will use. Because if you try to use a move that has more stamina than you have, you can use it, but you will also take a um, you will take the damage and difference, and also you won't be able to make a move the next turn because you have to like you know regain your stamina. So anyway. We have the digital type Chromion, which is also a fire type. Chromion in the wild can be any type in the game, including digital. Um, and then you have Mimit, which is a digital type, but once it transforms, it has the type and ability of the Temtem it turns into. And then we have Hegene. Hegene is a fire and digital type. And what, it abil what its ability allows it to do is basically give priority to its moves. Uh, its ability is called Gotta Go Fast, which is hilarious. And then we have Valash here. Flash has the ability Scavenger, so whenever any Temtem gets knocked out, whether an ally or an opponent, it gains a slight um, health increase, because it is a Scavenger. And then we have um, Amphitere here, a Nature and Electric type, with the ability Infectious, so I believe it does not allow the opponent to restore HP with uh, moves. And then my opponent's team here, they have a uh, toxic, which is poison. Toxic and melee type and Mashuk. Two wire is a digital and flying type. Um, Gialis is a pure crystal type. This is Voloren here, a toxic and flying type. And then they have their own Amphitere, which you already know. But it's shiny, see? 
<laughs> or Luma as they call it in this game. So getting into the battle here, uh, the strategy that you really want to use with a team like this is just take advantage of Chromium's ability and center type and spam its um, digital and fire type moves which don't really have that many resistances outside of um, like Earth I believe. I think that's the only type that like resists everything. But starting off the battle, we see that this my opponent has a common factor trait on its 2R, which basically means it makes everyone neutral, which means I am no longer a digital and fire type. I believe I am a neutral type, which is like normal, so none of my moves have stab. But even with that, I still have the power and ability of my um, Chromium behind it. So as you can see, that little green circle highlighted on um, a Shook right here. Uh, where is it right here that basically just means that um, it's a super effective move if that circle is red that means it's not very effective and if it's white that means it's a neutral so even though I don't have the type um, what am I trying to say even though I don't have the type advantage it's still gonna be super effective damage or at least I thought it should be I might have misspoke but the attacks are strong enough that doubling into the Mashook will be able to take it out and I definitely wanted to get rid of it because I was afraid of like late game it um, giving my Amphitheer problems because Toxic is super effective against nature and then my opponent goes for Faraday Cage and it gives me the seized um, penalty and what that does is basically mean any move that has a synergy because a lot of moves in here if you use them in conjunction with um, other types you'll get a synergy bonus and I don't get that synergy bonus when I'm seized. So right here, I'm gonna go for the Hellfire on, well actually the Harmful Microwaves, and I believe I go for Hellfire with my other one because I want to conserve my stamina and I also wanna get damage on both of them and Hellfire gives you damage on both of them. So I believe my one of my Chromus is gonna go down here because he's no longer um, neutralized. So he will take the super effective damage from that turbo attack. And then Noxious Bomb is not going to, um, I mean, it's going to do a lot, but it's not going to take me out. So right here, I can still get the synergy with Hellfire and Harmful Microwaves because of uh, Hedging being another digital fire type. So I bring it out, and it also gets um, a synergy boost from uh, my Mimit's copied center type ability. So I'm just going to double into this 2-wire to get rid of it because I fear that it's going to be a problem for me later on and I don't really have too, too much fear of the Volarin at the current time. Um, I think I brought my... No, I did not. Oh, I do have Blash. Okay, so I resist both of his stabs. So I'm not really afraid of uh, this Volarin and I don't believe it gets any melee type moves or any moves that I would be fearful of it having. So, thanks to Hajin's uh, special ability, Gotta Go Fast, it gives priority to its um, its moves. So, he brings out the Amphitheer here, which I don't believe was a good job, I mean, good job, a good idea. And he also brings out the Gyalas, both of which are weak to my fire type stabs, which I will have priority for thanks to Hajin. And I believe, um, what am I trying to say? And I believe, um, Chromium won't die to a crystal type move because it resists it. So I'm just going to go for the Hellfire here. I get the boost because of center type. And also Hellfire in itself gets boosted if used with a fire type ally. And also when used with a fire type ally, it adds the burn penalty to um, that Temtem. So he will be taking burn damage for two turns. And in those two turns, I am able to just go for another... Hellfire or Fire Tornado if I feel like it. So I believe here I go for the Fire Tornado onto the Volaren because I wanted to get some damage off on it. And I go for the Hellfire to the, with the Chromion to overexert it with stamina and also to get rid of the Gyalas. So I'm able to get some nice damage off and I predict that my Hygiene's just going to go down so I don't really see any point in preserving it. I feel very confident that I have this game in a bag at the moment and that's Gyalas's mirroring ability which basically it's like aftermath in Pokemon where you basically you take damage if you uh but every time you damage Gyalas you take damage 
it's not like aftermath where you um, if you knock it out then you take damage that would be the fainted curse ability in Temtem which the flying pig Temtem has so he brings out the two wire here and I bring out my Valash because Valash and Amphitheer both have priority on their moves. Um, Crystal Spikes for Valash and Plague for Amphitheer. Crystal Spikes usually always goes first and it's a very powerful special attacking move. And an Amphitheer's Plague has the additional effect of adding the exhaust penalty. Which basically means you use double the stamina for every move that you use while you have that penalty on you but bringing in the two wire again adds the common factor which makes us all neutralized and i believe i just go for the thunder strike on the um on the two wire because it is super effective against the doodle type and i just go for the crystal spikes on the volarent to take that out and i believe that is game here so oh actually it's not game <laughs> but i guess the next turn it will be game because um he doesn't have enough stamina or power to basically out muscle the rest of my team and I do have priority on uh, uh, pretty much all of my moves so he sees that here and he forfeits and we go ahead and take the win so I hope you guys enjoy videos like this because I would like to bring uh, more Temtem content to the channel that's outside of like you know just like shiny hunting or whatever and if you do let me know let me know if you would like to see live commentary after i record or if you would like to see the battle as it unfolds but either way i can do it but like i said i hope you guys enjoy this please leave a, a like down below if you did enjoy it also comment um i would love to see more people get into Tim Tim. it's a really fun game uh it's a really difficult game uh, especially early on uh, the 1.0 should be coming out, meaning the full game should be coming out next year because it is in early access right now. Uh, but even in early access, there's just so much for you to do, especially like every day and every week. Um, and there's a great community behind the game. I will leave links in the description for you guys to be able to check it out from like the trailer to the Kickstarter, letting you know the updates and everything. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.